Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. Chapter 14 is going to introduce us to solutions. And what we're going to start looking at in this chapter is to compare the properties of suspensions, colloids, and solutions together will be our objective. And then to look at our different types of colloid solutions. And we're not going to worry about our describing electric static forces with colloids. Now, when we look into mixtures, a mixture can be a combination of two or more pure substances. Now remember our pure substances can be elements or compound. Now it's going to be a mixture that retains individual properties. So if we were to look, our mixtures are going to be either an element and an element coming together. Our example here is zinc and copper atoms evenly mixing together. This is going to make the alloy brass. We'll look at later on. We could have an elements and compounds mixed together, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all of them equally mixed together. This would be an example of air, uh, where each thing equally kind of mixed together. And then we could also have two compounds together, like water and salt. And so we have salt water here. This are the chlorines and the sodiums intermixing with all of the H2O particles. So two or more substances mixed that retain their own individual properties. Now they can either be unevenly mixed, heterogeneous, so they do not mix evenly. Substances have distinct layers or differences that can be seen. Examples could be like Italian salad dressing, freshly squeezed orange juice, granite, uh, heterogeneous, not evenly mixed, or homogeneous. Homogeneous means that they're evenly mixed or equally blended throughout. Substances are, dis are there's not distinctness between them. They look the same from top to bottom, left to right, inside to out. So Kool-Aid's a good example if it's made correctly. Now, air breathing, every uh, breath you take is basically the same mixture. Uh, marshmallows, every bite you take is about the same one. Not milk. We're going to put milk in a different category later on, even though we kind of think of it as being homogeneous, it's not quite there. So it's kind of in the debating category. Now, flowchart wise, our mixtures can be broken down to heterogeneous, so our uneven, versus solutions, homogeneous, are evenly mixed. So if we're unevenly mixed, we can be looking at a suspension a thixotropic mixture or a colloid. If we're evenly mixed throughout, we'll know them to be either a solution, as they're properly called, or a homogeneous mixture. So to break down suspensions, suspensions, heterogeneous mixtures that particles settle out uh, if left undisturbed. So an example, you know, if you have muddy water, it would settle out over time. So you know, it would eventually, you got your water up top, and all the mud would fall down to the bottom. Uh, Pepto-bismol would be a good one. Anything that needs shaking is a clue that it's going to be a suspension. Thixotropic mixtures are mixtures that flow like a liquid when agitated, stirred, or if you put pressure on, would be a good example there. You know, if you were to think about toothpaste, until you squeeze it, it kind of is almost like a solid. And then once you apply pressure to it or agitate, stir it, then it starts to flow like a liquid. Um, peanut butter would be another good example of this where it's solid like until you apply that pressure. And colloids, colloids heterogeneous mixtures contain intermediate sized particles that don't settle out. So they don't settle out but they're a little bit larger in size. Our best example we're going to give is milk where the particles are large enough where they don't settle out but they're going to be able to scatter light here in just a minute. Uh, as we're looking at colloids, one way to distinguish between a colloid um, is the Tyndall effect. And the Tyndall effect is if we were to actually shine a light through a liquid or through the mixture 
and as we look does it scatter light meaning if we were to look down here we've got a light source and as that light's going through can we see that beam of light and through the first one you can see how we can actually see the light rays scattering as it's moving through the first particle those particles are too small and the light just continues to move through as it goes into the second one the particles inside are a little bit larger and they actually are able to hit the light and move it off into different directions and that's why we're seeing those light beams down below here so they have the ability to scatter light or dispersion of those part of the, by the dispersion of those particles if you were to look in the forest over here anytime you can see the sun beams from the sun up above the particles in here are large enough where they're hitting and scattering and moving light in different directions and that's what you see a lot of times you can see those on a sunny day especially during harvest time when there are a bunch of particles of grain up in the air so now solutions solutions homogeneous mixtures that one substance is spread out uniformly which means evenly throughout the second substance so an example we have in our notes is if you were to take copper sulfate a solid and put it into water as that copper sulfate sits there that copper sulfate is slowly going to be grabbed molecule by molecule and spread out evenly into the water until all of it is gone or uh, disappeared so the solid is being dissolved into the liquid one of our solutions possible now eventually it's evenly spread out to make it a solution it doesn't need to be shaken or stirred it's going to stay evenly mixed uh, once it's been mixed now our solutions have two parts the solute the solute is the beginning our uh, substance in the beginning that's uh, going to be dissolved so a good way to think about it is it's the smaller amount so in this case our solute would be what we're dissolving the copper sulfate the solvent is what does the dissolving it's the greater amount so in this case the solvent would be the water and as the solute is dissolved in the solvent once they're equally mixed or evenly mixed we form our solution aqueous solutions an example here water is our most common solvent and we call those aqueous solutions when water is involved water is our most common solvent on earth an um, example of this would be water and sodium chloride you know to write down sodium chloride is a solid and if we were to put it in water we would make sodium positive aqueous showing it's dissolved in water plus chlorine negative ion aqueous showing that they're both dissolved in that common water substance the AQ is explaining that they are dissolved in water properties of solutions uh, four of them that we're gonna look at our first of those four properties in number 11 number one is they're clear they don't disperse light so we can see by a laser pointer going through right here that this one particle is big enough to scatter light no laser pointer seen in the solution here so does not scatter light or disperse light they can have color or be colorless so another property is solutions can have color or no color they will not settle upon standing so our muddy water after it sits falls to the bottom our solution see how it can have color after a while does not settle it'll pass through a filter so if you put up top all of the material that started out in the top will drain down to the bottom and be at the bottom of the filter afterwards particle size is too small to be caught by a filter and that will be our last of our properties on solutions for today